Section 5.2, sum and difference formulas. In this section, we're going to derive identities for trig functions of additions and subtractions. So uh, we're going to list them first, and we're going to uh, prove each and every one of them. So we're going to have two formulas for sine, one pertaining to sine at, uh, acting at a sum, and sine, and the other is going to be sine acting on a difference. We're going to have similar properties for cosine and tangent. And obviously we can derive the other three formulas for the other three um, trig functions, right? So if you know sine, cosine, tangent, you know cotangent, cosine, cosec, and, um, and secant, right? Okay. Let's start by proving, let's start by proving the addition formula for cosine, this one this one right here. Let's start by proving this, this property. By the way, all these properties hold for all S and T as long as both sides make sense. Okay. All right. So let's start by proving this, this property, which is highlighted here, right? That's the same one. To this end, uh, take S and T to be real numbers and go to the unit circle. This is supposed to be a unit circle and uh, start by having the point P0. And from P0, travel the distance T along the path of the circle. So you're gonna land at some point, and this point is gonna be referred to as Q1. So what's Q1? It's the terminal point determined by the number T. And for S, I'm gonna have another terminal point determined by T, let's call it P1. And for the measure, uh, s but in the clockwise direction so negative s negative s so the angle p0 or q0 is negative s so what's q0 again it's the terminal point determined by the angle negative s remember the the measure of the angle the radian measure of the angle is the length of the arc that subtends it okay so the angle p0 or q0 is and radian is that measure negative s and the measure p0 o q1 is t and the angle p0 o p1 is t plus s right you see it it's right there t plus s all right so what are the coordinates of p p naught p naught has coordinates one comma zero that's the starting point right what's it's right there it's this one What's, what are the coordinates of the point Q1 determined by T? So the first coordinate is going to be cosine of this angle T. And the second coordinate is going to be sine of this angle T. Correct? It's right there. So Q1 has coordinate cosine of T and sine of T. Now, what are the coordinates of P1? P1 is the terminal point determined by the sum of S and T. So Q, P1 is going to have coordinates cosine of S plus T, comma, sine of s plus t it's right there and q naught what's q naught it's the terminal point determined by the measure or by the number minus s so the first coordinate of q naught is cosine of negative s and the second coordinate is going to be sine of negative s correct because any point any point on the unit circle determined by a real number is going to be it's going to have two coordinates the first one is going to be cosine of that that number and the second is sine of that number right okay look at q naught q naught well uh, cosine of negative s cosine is an even function so cosine of negative s is the same as cosine of s and sine is an odd function so sine of negative s is negative sine s okay this is written in the next comment here so q naught this point q naught has coordinates cosine s and negative sine s because of the even odd property of cosine and sine, right? All right. So next, what's the me what's the me measure of the arc? What's the length of the arc? P0, P1, this arc here. This is s plus s, uh, s plus t, right? And what's the measure of the arc Q1, Q0 or Q0, Q1? This is also s plus t. Agree with me? So what can you say then? We can say that the arc P0, P1 
is equal to the arc, the length of the arc Q0, Q1. Make sense? And since equal arcs are subtended by equal chords, it follows that the distance separating P1 and P0, so the distance of this dashed line, is equal to the distance of this dashed line. Because, as we said, equal arcs are subtended by equal chords. So P0, P1, the distance separating these two points and the distance separating Q0 and Q1 should be the same. Agree? So we have, we have this property that you see over here. This one, right? This one here. Agree with me? All right, so what's the distance? This is the Euclidean distance between P0 and P1, and this is the Euclidean distance between P Q0 and Q1. What's the distance between two points, the Euclidean distance? Well, it's the, um, it's the square root of the sum of the square of the differences of the coordinates, right? So uh, what's what's the what's the coordinate? What are the coordinates of p naught, p q, and p one? P naught is one, comma zero, and p one is q sine s of s plus t and sine f of s plus t. What's the difference then between the coordinates? Is going to be one minus cosine of s plus t squared. This one. I mean, when you, when you square, it doesn't matter in which order you put it, right? Because you can factor out in minus 1. And if you square that minus 1, you get the other order. So it doesn't matter in which order you put it. So uh, the change in the x-coordinates, cosine of s plus t minus 1 squared. This is the change in the x-coordinate. Square it. And the change in the y-coordinate, s sine of s plus t minus 0 squared. You get this. So what's this expression over here? This is the distance separating P0 from P1. Similarly, I'm going to try to find the distance separating Q0 from Q1. Same thing. It's the square root of the sum of the uh, square of um, change in coordinates. So for this one, it's going to be cosine of t minus cosine of negative s. And cosine of negative s, we talked about it. It's cosine of s. So that's going to be cosine of t minus cosine of s squared plus uh, the di change in uh, the y coordinates. So sine of t minus this guy, but this guy is negative sine s. So it's going to be sine of t minus the minus sine s squared. And minus the minus sine s is going to be plus sine s squared. Okay. Now, if we square both sides and expand, if you square both sides, you're going to lose this, these two big umbrellas. And you're going to expand each of, each of the uh, expression here that you, that you have. For example, the first one is the square of the difference between cosine of s plus t and 1. And how do you square a difference? How do you square a difference? The square of a difference is the sum of the squares decreased by twice the product, right? So it's going to be cosine of s plus t squared, so cosine squared s plus t, plus 1 squared, so plus 1, minus twice the product. The product is cosine of s plus t times 1, so minus twice that thing, right? Similarly here, you're going you're gonna to square, you're going to get this, I mean, minus 0 is not, I mean, sine of s plus t minus 0 is sine of s plus t. So you're going to take the square of sine of s plus t, so sine squared of s plus t. And you're going to play the same game here. You're going to square this difference and you're going to square this sum. So you're going to end up having that thing. Okay. And over here, what's cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of an angle? What's cosine squared of an angle plus sine squared of the same angle? This is the same angle, s plus t, s plus t, right? So what's that? This add up to 1, right? These two add up to 1. So this plus this is equal to 1. Agree with me? And 1 plus this one is a 2. It's right there. Minus 2 cosine of s plus t, right there. All right, over here. What's cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t? How much is this? This is also a 1 by the Pythagorean identity. How about, how about um, 
cosine squared of s plus sine squared of s, this is also a 1. This is also a 1 for, for the same reason. Um, the Pythagorean identity, um, the Pythagorean identity, right? So you get 1 plus 1, which is 2. It's right there. Minus 2 cosine s cosine t plus 2 sine t sine s. You get that. Okay? Subtract both sides by 2. You lose this 2 and you lose this 2. And then divide by 2 or by negative 2. You get exactly what you want. You get exactly what, what you want. So what happened in the last step? You subtracted both sides by 2. That That's going to allow us to cancel this 2 and this 2, this 2 if you subtract both sides by 2. And now divide through by negative 2. That's going to turn into negative 2 divided by negative 2, which is 1. So cosine of s plus t. And divide this guy by negative 2. It's going to be cosine of s times cosine of t. And divide negative plus 2 by negative 2, it becomes negative 1, and then you're going to multiply by sine, sine t sine s, so you get this. And that's going to prove, that's going to take care of the addition formula for cosine, right? Th this one. This one. Or that one, the same thing, correct? So we've done with this. So we've done with this, we've showed it. it Make sense? So I'm going to just, um, I'm going to put a check mark next to it. This is okay now. We've shown it. Next, uh, how about cosine of s minus t? We show cosine of a difference. We have at our disposal this one, and we have it for any t of our choice, right? No matter what t is, no matter what you choose this uh, a number to replace t, that's going to hold true, correct? As long as you replace it here and here. So to be more precise, let me just say, let me replace this guy by like some symbol how about an asterisk and let me change s let me change s to be a star and let's read it this way cosine of star plus asterisk is equal to cosine of star times cosine of asterisk minus sine of star times sine of asterisk okay so no matter what star and asterisk are uh, this is gonna hold correct all right how about now we take how about now we take instead of this guy asterisk how about we take negative t for this guy and instead of this star how about we take s and let's read this this becomes cosine of s plus negative t what's cosine what's s plus negative t isn't it s minus t isn't it this piece isn't it this piece over here correct one more time we had this property that holds for any star and for any asterisk i'm gonna specialize the star to be s and i'm gonna specialize the asterisk to be negative t as such star plus asterisk becomes s plus negative t and what's s plus negative t it's s minus t correct okay so we get this side with this specialized uh, specialized items star and asterisk we get the left hand side of this new identity which we need to show and over here this becomes cosine over here this becomes cosine of star whose star it's s right so this becomes cosine of s you see it? it's just below it and cosine times cosine of the asterisk and who's the asterisk is negative t so this becomes cosine of negative t and but what's cosine of negative t since cosine is an even function cosine of negative t is cosine of t so we get that minus minus sine of the star who's my star in my context now s so this becomes minus sine of s you see this don't forget i still have a minus here times sine of asterisk and who's my asterisk is negative t so replace asterisk asterisk by negative t you get sine of negative t but what sine of negative t since sine is odd sine of negative t is minus sine of t and this minus that you get talks to this minus it, it uh, converts it into a plus right and you get sine of s times sine of t 
So as such, we only we also get this guy. You see. So uh, once you get cosine acting on a sum, you can easily transport information and derive the formula for cosine acting on a difference. And similarly for all the rest, once you show one, you can show the other. Okay. For example, sine of a sum. If you manage to show which, if we manage to show sine of a sum, we get the sine of the difference in a very similar argument. Make sense? And so on and so forth. Okay. So this is explained in the next bullet. It's explained over here. So this is the proof of subtraction. The discussion is very much the same as before. If you want to see it mathematically, uh, I just said replace t by negative t in the addition formula and rewrite s minus t as s plus negative t and apply now the uh, addition formula for cosine. You get that guy. And you use the even up uh, properties uh, or identities that we just discussed. Cosine negative t is cosine of t, and sine of negative t is negative sine t, but the negative times the negative is going to be plus. Okay, so this takes care of the subtraction formula for cosine. So what do we have no so far? We've shown we've shown these two properties. Now we're going to move, we're going to move, and we're going to try now to show this property, the sine of a sum okay so we want to try to show we want to try to show so next we shall show the addition formula for sine Okay, so that is to say, we want to show that for any, for any S and T, for any S and T real numbers and R, real numbers, we have sine of S plus T is equal to sine of S times cosine of T minus, oh sorry, plus uh, cosine of s times sine of t. This is what we want to show, correct? All right. You know how we're going to do it? We're going to start by doing the, fo the following. We know that sine and cosine are cofunctions, which means that sine of something, whatever this thing is, is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus that thing okay whatever that thing is whatever that thing is make sense so if we, we've talked about we've shown this before correct so sine of some angle is equal to cosine of pi over 2 minus uh, minus uh, that same thing that same angle agree with me you know what I'm going to choose for this now? I'm going to choose it to be s plus t. So I'm going to take this out, replace it by s plus t. Since this guy and this guy are the same, I have to take this out and replace it by s plus t as well. Agree with this. Okay. Next. Well, this is the same as cosine of pi over 2 minus s minus t agree with me so cosine of pi over 2 minus the sum s plus t is the same as pi over 2 distribute distribute this uh, multiplication over addition here so minus 1 times s is minus s plus minus 1 times t is negative t right so we get minus t all right and now take a look i'm gonna package these up i'm gonna treat this as one thing and this becomes, this becomes cosine of an angle minus another angle, correct? Cosine of something minus something else. Do you have a formula to this um, that handles this? Let's take a look. Didn't we just show this? Cosine of something minus something else. So the green part is this below and the pink part is 
this, right? Yes. So I'm going to apply this principle. I'm going to apply this principle. So I'm going to apply it immediately. So I'm going to apply here. So we're going to apply cosine of um, how about we keep it star and asterisk so minus asterisk is equal this is the second property the co the, the subtraction property for cosine so cosine of star minus asterisk we show that this is cosine of star cosine of asterisk plus sine of star sine of asterisk am I correct this is what we just showed and that's what I'm gonna need here I'm gonna apply it so I'm gonna apply this at this level Let me change color for you so I'm gonna apply it at this level where that guy is gonna play the role of star and T is gonna play the role of asterisk right so who's going to play the role of star? This package is playing the role of star, and T is playing the role of asterisk. And let's see what we get. We get, let's read it. Cosine of star. Who's star? Star is pi over 2 minus s. We get cosine of my star package, so pi over 2 minus s, times cosine of asterisk. Who's my asterisk? T. So I get times, not minus, times, cosine of t plus plus sine of star whose star again whose star again is pi over 2 minus s so sine of pi over 2 minus s times sine of asterisk and whose asterisk is t again right so we get this okay and now talk to me. Cosine of pi over 2 minus s. Cosine of pi over 2 minus something. We just talked about it here. We set it up this way, remember? Cosine of pi over 2 minus an angle. Isn't it sine of the angle? Because uh, cosine is and, and sine are co-functions. So we get sine of s, right? This guy is sine of s. This guy is sine of s because cosine and sine are co-function. And how about this guy? Uh, sine of pi over 2 minus an angle. This is the same. Uh, this is the same treatment because sine and cosine are co-functions. This is cosine of s. Correct? And now, what do we get at the end? So we get sine of s, this guy, times cosine of t, times cosine of t, plus this guy is cosine of s times sine of t correct isn't it the same isn't it what we wanted just compare the two i mean we wanted sine of a sum s plus t to be this guy we have exactly the same right so we just showed that so as as desired that's exactly what we wanted make sense so back to the list of formulas let's see what we what we have and what we still have to show we've shown this now we've shown this now right let me erase it then so we've shown this now we're gonna do the the minus but we know the trick right we know the trick we've we've used it at this point we know the trick what i'm gonna do is exactly as before how about calling uh, this one bullet so as I'm calling it bullet that's gonna be bullet and that's gonna be bullet right correct it's the same one and the T how about we call it something else how about we call it I don't know like a dagger or something okay something like this okay so what, what we have is sine of a bullet plus a dagger is equal to sine of a bullet cosine of a, the dagger plus cosine of the bullet times sine of the dagger. All right. What do we want? We want sine of S minus T. So who do you think I'm going to take the bullet to be? How about S being the bullet? 
how about taking S to be the bullet? And who's gonna take the roll of the dagger? To have a plus, how about taking the minus T to be the dagger? Okay. So that thing is gonna be minus T. And the bullet is gonna be S. Alright. And apply this thing, the first one, because we have this one at, at, the, at our disposal now. We just showed it, right? So we have this one. So bullet, I specialize it to be S, and dagger, I specialize it to be negative T. So this becomes sine of S cosine of negative T, right? Sine of S cosine of negative T. What's cosine of negative T since cosine is an even function? Cosine of negative T is cosine of T. So we get this part. So we get the, the part just below it. For this special for these specialized specialized items, plus cosine of the bullet. Who's the bullet? Is S. So plus cosine of S times sine of the dagger. Who's the dagger? Negative T. So this becomes then cosine of S times sine of negative T. But what sine of negative T? Since sine is odd, this is negative sine of T, and negative times the pos the plus. It's going to be minus, right? So minus cosine of, uh, sorry, minus, yeah, cosine of S times sine of T, which is exactly this. So that's going to take care of this formula, right? So we've shown all, all four at this point. Um, moving on to the tangent, how about we deal now with the tangent of, of a sum? We're going to show now this one. That's that's the formula we need to show at this point. Okay, let's go to let's go to that page. Okay, we're gonna prove the addition formula for tangent. Tangent of s plus t, so tangent of an angle, is sine of this angle divided by cosine of that angle, and I'm taking this angle to be this guy, right? So I have to replace it here and here. So tangent of an angle is sine of this angle divided by cosine of the same angle. If the angle is uh, omega, that's going to be omega, that's going to be omega. If this angle is theta, that's going to be theta, and that's going to be theta. In this, in this uh, discussion, we have that angle to be s plus t. So that's going to be s plus t, that's going to be s plus t. Okay? All right. Do we have a formula for sine of s plus t? Yeah, it's the very first formula uh, we have on the list, right? It's... We have that sine of s plus t is sine of s, cosine of t, plus cosine of s, sine of t. And we have a formula for cosine acting on a sum. Yes, we do. It's cosine of s, cosine of t, minus sine of s, sine of t. And this is the very first one we show today. All right, next, we're going to multiply and divide by this factor. We're going to multiply and divide. So we are introducing this factor. Realize that this factor's value is 1, right? No problem. This is 1 because I'm multiplying and dividing by this number. So this is 1. So I'm not changing the value of this quotient. But why this is useful? Look, once you multiply upstairs and downstairs by this entity, now distribute this multiplication over addition. What do we have? We have 1 over cosine of s cosine of t times sine s cosine t. So we're going to get this quotient. So it's going to be sine s cosine t divided by cosine s cosine t. Plus cosine s sine t times this is going to be cosine s sine t divided by cosine s cosine t. So we get this, right? Similarly downstairs, we're going to multiply this fraction by cosine s cosine t, so you get cosine s cosine t divided by cosine s cosine t. And here you have sine s sine t times this quotient, which means sine s sine t divided by cosine s times cosine t downstairs. Right? With that minus, obviously. Alright, at this point we're going to simplify cosine t divided by cosine t in this fraction. They cancel each other. Over here, cosine s divided by cosine x. Uh, cosine s, they cancel each other. Over here, this is cosine s divided by cosine s and cosine t divided by cosine t. So this whole thing is 1 now because everybody canceled. Everybody upstairs canceled everybody downstairs. So this is a 1. You see it? It's, it's a 1. 
and over here nothing uh, no common factor upstairs and downstairs so what do we get we get here sine s divided by cosine s but what sine of an angle divided by cosine of the same angle is it a tangent of the angle so that thing is tangent of s you see it how about this sine of t divided by cosine of t sine of an angle divided by cosine of the same angle it's the same one so that's tangent of that angle this is number one and that guy what is this what's this guy well what's this piece isn't it tangent of s this is tangent of s you see it you see it right there and how about the other one how about this piece isn't it tangent of t isn't it tangent of t correct so this becomes tangent s times tangent t and if you go back to page one that's exactly what we wanted this completes the proof that's exactly what we wanted let me let me take you back to page one you see it the highlighted one it's right there that's exactly what we wanted okay so we can now um validate this formula okay we can now validate it we have it we've shown it and lastly uh, we want to show this right well that's the same trick as before you want to call one bullet one dagger or something and replace the bullet by s and replace the dagger by negative t and treat it the same as, as we did before we did it a couple of times so i'm gonna let you do this on your own uh, it's not that hard to do okay so again what you're gonna be applying to show the last formula is you're gonna apply this formula but for s to be s and for t to be negative t okay so that's gonna be tangent of s plus tangent of negative t what's negative tangent of negative t tangent is an odd function so tangent of negative t is negative tangent of t one is a one minus tangent of s times tangent of negative t but we just said tangent of negative t is negative tangent of t so that whole thing is going to be negative the negative so plus tangent s times tangent t okay so that's going to take care of this formula i encourage you to actually do it yourself do all three uh, by yourself just write each one of them but i gave you the trick okay all right so now we're going to go to the book and we're going to do some uh, some problems we're going to go to page 587. This is section 5.2. And we're going to choose a problem from 7 to 18. How about we choose... Uh, let me choose an even one. How about we choose... Um, how about 14? So we're gonna go to we're gonna do 14. This is on page that's on page 587. So number 14 is cosine of 7 pi over 12. What's the question? What's the question? Let's go back. What's the question? The question is to use an addition or subtraction formula to find the exact value. Okay, we don't need to find it through a calculator. We want to actually discover it on using one of the properties we just discovered above. All right, cosine of 7 pi over 12. Well, 7 pi over 12, how can you see the 7 pi over 12 as a sum or difference of two remarkable angles? Well, 7 pi over 12 uh, can be thought of as pi over 3 plus pi over 4, right? Pi over 3 is a remarkable one, and pi over 4 is a remarkable one. You agree with me? All right, check again. How do you add these two guys? I have the same denominator, which is 12, and upstairs is going to be 4 pi plus 3 pi, and 4, pl 4 pi plus 3 pi is 7 pi over 3. Okay, so these are remarkable angles. Uh, this looks good as a setup, and then I'm going to let the addition formula for cosine to kick in. And cosine of a sum, right, we just showed this above. Cosine of a sum is cosine of one angle times sine of the other angle 
minus sine of the first one times cosine of the second, right? All right, do we know each of those numbers? The cosine of pi over 3, sine of pi over 4, and so on? Yes, we do, because pi over 3 and pi over 4 are remarkable angles, as we said. Um, let's, recall, let's recall this table. How about I move this a little bit to create the table? Uh, we had a way... We had a way to uh, re-establish this table, if you remember. Let's do it quickly, just to refresh memories. So let's arrange those remark these acute remarkable angles. The smallest was pi over 6, right? This is the 30 degree angle. Pi over 4 and pi over 3 is the largest among all these. Okay. And the first row, we're going we're gonna to list the outcome through the function sine. The second row is we're going to list the outcome through the function cosine. So sine of pi over 6 is going to be this and so on. And then how did we how did we establish how did we uh, I mean we found a way to establish this this uh, this table even though we proved each 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 one of them but the way we found to memorize in some sense this table is let's write one two three right uh, and then take the square root of each one square root of one is one square root of two and square root of three and then I'm going to divide each each one of them, sorry, each one of them by 2. Correct? So sine of pi over 6 is 1 half and so on. And then the second row, I'm going to read it backwards. So I'm going to get square root of 3 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, and 1 half. Okay. So this is just a way to memorize this table, even though we proved all of them. But it would be nice to remember them whenever we need them. Cosine of pi over 3, what is it? Cosine of pi over 3, it's half, right? So that's half times sine of pi over 4. What's sine of pi over 4? It's square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Minus sine of pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. And cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Right. All right. Let's uh, let's clean up this writing a little bit. This is square root of two over four minus square root of three times square root of two over four. Right. Okay. But if you remember, the product of the square roots is the square root of the product. Square root and multiplication commute. It doesn't matter which one you take first, the multiplication or the square root. So as such, you get the whole thing is over 4. It's a common denominator. It's a common denominator. Upstairs is square root of 2 minus square root of 3 times 2. Square root of 3 times 2, which is square root of 6, right? So we get this. We get this, right? Agree? Okay. Back to the book. Okay, how about one of these, 19 through 26? Let's take the last one, 26. Sine of 10 pi over 9, cosine of 7 pi over 18, plus cosine of 10 pi over 9, sine of 7 pi over 18. Use addition and subtraction formula to find the exact value. Okay, so as we said, this is number, uh, the, previous was, what, uh, the previous one was number what? Uh, let's see. Uh, this was numbers 14 at the time, right? And now we are going to 26. So 14 was this. Now we're going to do 26. And 26 is sine of 10 pi over 9. Cosine of 7 pi over 18. Plus cosine of 10 pi over 9, sine of 7 pi over 18. Correct? Okay, so look at this and contrast it with one of the formulas we have above. 
this looks sine cosine plus cosine sine and obviously the same angle that sine is acting here cosine is gonna act here and the same angle that cosine is acting here sine is acting here let's go to the very first page let's go to the very first page and check which one looks like this which one looks like sine cosine plus cosine sine sine cosine plus cosine sine it looks the first one this is the first one this is the sine of the sum of the angles this is the sine of the sum of the angles right let's go back to the last page so let's go back to this this is the same then as sine of the sum of the angles we just discovered this 10 pi over 9 plus 7 pi over 18 agree with that all right this is the formula this is sine of a sum as we used to do it backwards as uh, sine of the first times cosine of the second plus cosine of the first times sine of the second okay so uh, let's let's find what this sum is then this is sine acting on the sum. What's the sum? How about making the same denominator? What's the same denominator in this context? 18? Let's multiply by 2 here and multiply by 2 here to make the denominator 18. Correct? And keep the value of the quotient. So this is still a 1, right? So we multiplied by 1. We didn't change the value. All right. So this becomes then... This becomes then... Over 18, no doubt. Over 18. 2 times 20 is, uh, sorry, 2 times 10 is 20, right? 20 pi plus 7 pi. Correct? So we got that one. We got that one. And this is equal to sine of 27 pi over 18, which is equal to sine of what 27 is i can rewrite 27 as 18 plus 9 right 18 plus 9 correct why this is useful i mean as we used to do before um just wait wait just just bear with me for a second this is sine of 18 pi plus 9 pi over 18, correct? Because 27 pi is 18 pi plus 9 pi, or we can see it this way, is equal to sine of 18 pi over 18 plus 9 pi over 18. Agree with that? 9 pi over 18. And then 18 over 18 is 1. So that becomes sine of pi plus 9 over 18 is 1 half, 1 half. So this is simply pi over 2, correct? It's pi over 2. All right, and what is that? What is that? Sine of pi plus pi over 2. This is sine. You, you can use the addition formula again something like this we get sine of pi cosine of pi over 2 plus cosine of pi over pi times sine of pi over 2 you can use the addition formula for sine again or you can just add it up and just see what this angle this angle is 3 pi over 2 right which is a remarkable angle that's a remarkable angle what, what's this angle on uh, I mean just go back to the circle the unit circle the angle is the angle is this one, right? Okay, so which one is it? That's the angle, right? That's the angle. This is 3 pi over 2. And what's that terminal point? It has two coordinates, 0 and negative 1. The first is for cosine, the second is for sine. So this is cosine of pi, 3 pi over 2, which is 0 and sine of 3 pi over 2 which is negative 1 so uh, i'm interested to know what the sine of 3 pi over 2 so it's the y coordinate as, as we just said this is negative 1 right does this make sense all right let's keep going
Okay, how about the problem from 27 through 32? Let's choose one of them. How about 32? The question is find the exact value of or for the expression under the given conditions. So we have, we, we were, were given that tangent of alpha plus beta is, actually no, this is what we want to find, tangent of alpha plus beta. And they gave us cosine of alpha. And they told us that alpha is in the third quadrant. And they gave us sine of beta. And they, they told us that beta is in the fourth quadrant. Correct? Let's do that. So which problem is this again? This is 32. So they told us cosine of alpha is equal to negative 13 over 85. And they told us that alpha is in the third quadrant. Correct? So on the picture, how does it look like so far? If that's the unit circle. <clears throat> okay. Um, alpha is an angle in the third quadrant. So this is quadrant one. Two, remember the orientation is counterclockwise. Three, right? So alpha is somewhere here. Let's say this is angle alpha, and it has a terminal point here. So let's say that this is alpha. All right, and they told us also that sine of beta is negative 63 over 65, with beta as in quadrant fourth. Correct? So what is beta on the picture? Beta is something like this, quadrant four. So, okay, that's a bad one. Let's try again. So, beta is something over here. Okay, so this is the angle beta. The green one is beta. And this is the terminal point determined by beta. Okay. All right. Certainly, cosine of alpha, because alpha is. So let me be very clear. So this terminal point here is going to have two coordinates, right? The first one is cosine of alpha. The second one is sine of this angle alpha. Certainly cosine alpha is the x coordinate, so it's negative. And the y coordinate here, sine, is also negative. Both of them are negative in this context. So this each one of them is negative. Let me highlight this. This guy and this guy are both negative, right? How about the green point determined by the terminal point determined by beta? Also, is going to have two coordinates. The first one is cosine of this angle beta, and the second is sine of beta, right? What do you know about the, the sine of each one of them? Cosine is positive here. This guy is positive. And the sine is negative, right? Correct? The sine is negative. It's the y coordinate. Make sense? All right, so what they gave they give us? They gave us cosine of alpha, and they gave it to us negative. That's good. And they gave us sine of beta, and they gave it to us negative. Correct? All right. And what do they want? They wanted us to find tangent of alpha plus beta. Agree? That's what, this is what they wanted us to find. All right. So we're going to go to the formula, the addition formula for tangent. What's tangent of alpha plus beta? If you go to that formula listed above, well, this is tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta divided by 1 minus tangent of alpha times tangent of beta, right? Agree with this? Okay, so I want to find tangent of alpha and I want to find tangent of beta, given what I have, given what I have. All right, let's go for the first one. Let's find, let us determine at this point, the two entities, tangent of alpha 
and tangent of theta. Right? Okay, tangent of alpha, well, tangent of any angle is equal to sine of this angle divided by cosine of that angle. Am I correct? Okay. Do we have sine of alpha? No, we don't. We have cosine of alpha. Do we have cosine of alpha? Yes. This, is, this guy is known downstairs, but sine of alpha is not known. How do we find? How about we find it? How do we find sine of alpha given cosine of alpha? I hope by, by now this is second nature to you. We're going to refer to the uh, Pythagorean identity. We know that cosine of alpha plus sine, cosine squared of alpha plus sine squared of alpha is equal to how much? 1, right? Which means, which means that the square of sine alpha is 1 minus cosine squared of alpha which is 1 minus, what's cosine squared? What's the cosine of alpha in this context? Well, cosine of alpha is this entity. So we should, we should square this, we should square this. So it's going to be the square of that guy. How much is this guy again? It's negative 13 over 85, right? Negative 13 over 85, which is equal to 1 minus 13 squared over 85 squared, right? Because if you square the negative, it becomes positive, and if you square a quotient, that's the quotient of the squares, right? All right. If you do the same denominator, if you do the same denominator, which is 85 squared, it's going to be 85 squared minus 13 squared, correct? 85 squared minus 13 squared. Use your calculator here. 85 squared is how much? Let's see. 85 squared is 7225, and 13 squared is 169. And if you take the difference, you're going to get 7056, which is 84 squared over 85 squared. Okay? So here, calculator is involved. Calculator is involved. Okay? So use calculator. To get this okay all right so at the end of the day this is sine squared remember this is sine squared what's sine sine is gonna sine of alpha is gonna be plus or minus we have to determine this square root of 84 squared divided by 85 squared which one should we choose the positive or the negative well we know that alpha is in which quadrant alpha is in the third quadrant right the blue angle and we discuss sine alpha is negative so which which sign do we choose we choose the negative so I'm gonna erase the positive right I'm gonna erase the positive make sense all right and what is this this means that sine of alpha is minus 84 over 85 so this is that's what I'm gonna be needing to find the tangent of alpha so all of this I'm gonna need as a package, as a package to get to this entity here. What's this entity? That's sine of alpha over cosine of alpha. Sine of alpha, we just found it. This is minus 84 over 85. And cosine of alpha, it's upstairs. It's uh, actually above, but we can find it here. Cosine of alpha was negative 13 over 85, right? This is what they gave us as cosine of alpha. And now if you simplify, if you simplify, what do we get? We get that this is equal to 84 over 13, correct? We, negative divided by negative is positive. And this, pro, this quotient here, 85 divided by, 84 divided by 85 times 85 over, over, 80, over 13, right? We've done many, many of these, so I'm, uh, I mean, I'm going to safely, you know what, okay, I changed my mind. I'm going to do it one more time. So this is the same as 84 divided by 85, and this is divided by 13 over 85, right? All right, dividing by something is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this right guy. 13 over 85, so I'm going to get 85 over 13. 
okay and I hope now you believe me that this is 84 over 13 if you simplify by 85 if you simplify by 85 right make sense okay so how much is tangent alpha is 84 over 13 why do we need this this entity we needed it to construct tangent of the sum of alpha plus plus beta right so now we know this ingredient and we know this ingredient tangent of alpha what's next next you're gonna find tangent of beta which is this and this and that's the last ingredient needed to make up that that entity tangent of alpha plus beta all right how are we gonna find tangent of beta very much the same as we did for tangent of alpha let's find that so let's now find tangent of beta but tangent of beta is sine of beta over cosine of beta right what did they give us they gave us they gave us sine of beta I remember correctly above sine of beta they told us that this is negative 63 over 65 right if you check above this is what they gave us the question is what is cosine what is cosine of beta so we want to find cosine of beta right all right same trick as we just did above we're going to use the Pythagorean identity cosine squared beta plus sine squared beta is equal to 1 this is the same as saying cosine squared of beta is equal to 1 minus sine squared, correct? And this is the same thing as saying that cosine squared of beta is equal to 1 minus the square of sine beta. What's the square of sine beta? That's the square of negative 63 over 65. Agree with that? Okay, and what is this? This is 1 minus 63 squared over 65 squared. And if you do the same denominator, which is 65 squared, so 65 squared minus 63 squared. Okay, all right, if you don't want to involve any, all right, if you want to just do, use the calculator here, 65 squared is 4225 and 63 squared is 3969 the whole thing is divided by 65 squared let's keep it 65 squared below and this difference is um, 256 and 256 has 16 uh, is the is 16 squared so this is 16 squared divided by 65 squared okay all right so this means cosine of beta is positive or negative of the square root of 16 squared over 65 squared and the question is which si which sign is it positive or negative we've discussed this beta is in the fourth quadrant and as such the cosine is positive so which sign do should i choose should certainly choose the positive so i'm going to erase this part i'm going to get the positive part and that's simply 16 over 65. agree cosine of beta is 16 over 65. so this whole package this whole package will be needed to pass from this side to this side and now I'm gonna write downstairs which is cosine of beta 16 over 65 16 over 65 okay all right and this is the same format as we did above you can run the same the same discussion and the, the whole thing is gonna be negative 63 over 16 okay so we get that we get that and this is what this is tangent of beta this is tangent of beta right so can we now find tangent of the sum can we now find the tangent of the sum let's do it so all in all 
tangent of alpha plus beta, which we said it's tangent is tangent of alpha, right? Plus tangent of beta. What's tangent of alpha? We found this. 84 over 13. 84 over 13. So that's going to be 84 over 13 plus plus tangent of beta, which is minus 63 over 16. So minus 63 over 13, over 16, sorry, divided by 1 minus tangent of alpha. times tangent of beta. Agree? So we get this. All right, if you would like to simplify, go for it. You don't have to, but um, let's, just, let's just do it. So let's have the same denominator upstairs and downstairs. Let's have the same denominators first upstairs. How about 13? times 16 as a common denominator upstairs. Okay, uh, doesn't matter what this number is, let's just keep it like this. And here I'm gonna multiply by 16 above, so 84 times 16, right? I'm gonna get 1344, I'm using definitely my calculator here, minus, right, minus 63 times 13, because I wanna make this guy 13 downstairs. I'm multiplying here 13 and 13. And what's 63 times 13 is 819, okay? Downstairs, I'm going to have a common denominator 13 times 16 again. So 13 times 16. Okay, let me, right, let me do it in stages. So 13 times 16. And here I'm going to have 84 times negative 63. 84 times negative 63, it's going to be, negative can be pushed outside, and the negative times the negative is going to turn it into a plus times 63. Agree with that? Okay. All right, and this is how much? This is how much? Let's have a common denominator downstairs. Let me just copy everything upstairs. So 13 times 16, 1344 minus 819. Downstairs, I'm going to have 1 written as 13 times 16 divided by 13 times 16, correct? 13 times 16 divided by 13 times 16 plus the 84 times 63 and the whole thing divided by 13 times 16, right? And as we've talked ab about this above, I have the same denominator for the numerator and the denominator. So this guy cancel. This guy cancel. Why again? It's the it's very much the same discussion as we discussed it over here. Over here, you see, we had the same denominator here. So if we have a divided by b divided by c divided by b, the same denominator. At the end of the day, we're gonna have a divided by uh, by uh, c, right? So a over c, b over c over b. The b's cancel out, and you only get a over c. Same treatment. Say same treatment. So we get this. So we get the numerator divided by the denominator. Okay. So we get. Oops. So we get. Thirteen forty-four minus eight one nine divided by thirteen times sixteen plus eighty-four times sixty-three. Okay. All right, what's 1344 minus, what's 1344 minus 819? That's 525 upstairs. That's 525 upstairs. And downstairs, 13 times 16, turns out that I need this. This is 208 plus 84 times 63. That's 5292. And if you add up these guys downstairs, we get 550. So we have 525 divided by 5500, right? 
All right, how about we divide by 25 upstairs and downstairs? If we divide by 25 upstairs, we get 21. And if we divide by 25 downstairs, we get 220. Okay, so this is at the end of the day, 21 over 220. Okay, we cannot simplify any further because 21, the prime factorization of 21 is 3 times 2, uh, 3 times 7, sorry, 3 times 7. And the prime factorization of 22, uh, of two, two, 220, I mean, 3 and 7 obviously do not divide 220. Why? Because 220 is 2 times 11 times 2 times times 5, right? So I see nowhere 3 or 7. So these are co-prime, and this is the reduced form of this quotient. All right, I know this is annoying. The algebra part is annoying, but you know what? For the purpose of our class, um, as long as you write, as long as you write this, and you find for me each ingredient, which means you find for me tangent alpha and tangent of beta, right? We found them this page and this page that's it you can end it right here you don't have to keep you don't have to do all this mess okay it's just algebra and you you, you passed that that stage right so it's just algebra and uh, you've been tested on this so these last two pages you don't need to write okay for the purpose of our course so one more time the only thing you need to do in this and such a problem is to tell me the recipe of, because the question is find tangent of alpha plus beta. Tell me the recipe. You tell me the tangent of alpha plus beta is this quotient. And you tell me what each ingredient is. Well, the ingredients that are needed here are just tangent of alpha and tangent of beta. So once you find them, and this and this, we're done. You're done. You don't even need to continue because you told me what the recipe is and you told me what the ingredients are. And I'll follow it. So, okay. Make sense? All right, we're gonna go back to the book. Okay, so we finished 32. Let's do one of these problems from 33 to 40. Um, about 38. So here we need to find the exact value of this entity, sine of, sine acting on the sum. It's a sum here, right? Cosine inverse of 12 over 13 and tangent inverse of 4 over 3. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let me zoom in a little more. So this is on page, same page, 587. This is number 38 now. Okay. So I want to find the exact value of sine of cosine inverse 12 over 13 plus tangent inverse of 4 over 3. All right, so this is clearly sine is acting on a sum, okay? So you have one angle, this is an angle, plus another angle, right? So sine is acting on this sum. Sine of this plus that. And sine of a sum, it's one of the formulas we derived in this section, sine of a sum is equal to sine of the first, times cosine of the second plus cosine of the first times sine of the second. Correct? So we get this. All right, we want to find each one of them. We want to find each one of them. If we call this guy angle theta, we want to find sine theta. We want to find cosine theta. But let me let me tell you the following. You see this cosine and cosine inverse back to back. As long as this ang as long as this number is smaller than one, remember what happens from a previous previous section. The inverse uh, trick function is here, right? Cosine cosine inverse back to back. If this number is smaller than one, this is clearly uh, smaller than one 
what I mean by smaller, I, I mean something between minus 1 and 1. This is certainly between minus 1 and 1. So back to back, they cancel each other, they undo each other. And what do we get? We get that this is simply 12 over 13. Okay, this part is easy. Just this part. For the rest, I want to find sine of this angle. Let's call this angle theta. So I want to find sine of theta, cosine of this angle. Let's call it, I don't know, uh, lambda plus this number. I have this number now. Sine of lambda, right? Make sense? So, uh, so over here, we're going to do the following. We're going to let... Okay, let me choose a different color. Maybe this is bad for the video. How about um, this color? So let theta be cos denotes cosine inverse of 12 over 3, over 13. Correct? This is between minus 1 and 1. So this theta is meaningful, correct? This is a meaningful thing. All right. And where does this live, by the way? Theta should be in... Remember the range of cosine inverse? The range of cosine inverse is 0 pi, right? It's 0 pi. So what can you say about sine of theta? It should be positive because theta is in the first or second quadrant. So as such, the sine should be positive. The y value of the terminal point determined by theta, that's what I mean by sine, right? It's certainly positive. Agree with me? All right. Uh, what we want is sine of theta, right? That's the guy I'm calling theta. That's the guy I'm calling theta. So I'm, I want sine of that theta, right? I know that this sine is going to be positive for sure, okay? All right. Well, out of this, what can you say about cosine? Can't you say that cosine of theta, remember, the, I mean, how the inverse function operates? If the inverse function takes 12 over 13 to theta, then the function is going to take theta, the function itself, which is cosine, is going to take theta back to 12 over 13. Remember these? Okay. So cosine of theta is 12 over 13, right? All right. What do we want? We want sine of theta. Well, from cosine, how do we pass to sine? Again, this is the same trick over and over. So uh, we're going to find sine of theta by applying uh, the Pythagorean identity. I know that cosine squared plus sine squared of the same angle, so in this case theta, is, they should add up to 1. So which means sine squared of theta is 1 minus cosine squared. What's cosine here? It's 12 over 13, so it's going to be 1 minus the square of 12 over 13. Agree with that? Okay, which is 1 minus 144 over 169, right? Agree with me because um, 12 squared is, one, is 144 and 13 squared is 169. And then what do we get? This is the same then as 169. If you do the same denominator, minus 144, and the whole thing divide by 169. And 169 minus 144 is 25, right? So that's 5 squared over... 13 squared. Agree with that? Okay. So sine of theta, that's, that's sine squared of theta, correct? That's sine squared of theta. So sine of theta is how much? It's plus or minus, it's plus or minus the square root of this guy. But again, it's, it's not both, obviously, because sine is a function. It cannot produce two different outputs. So it's one of them. The question is, which one is it? Well, what do we know about sine theta? sine theta. We know that sine theta is positive. We know that sine theta is positive. So that's going to be the plus sign. So we're going to erase the minus sign. Make sense? So what's sine of theta then? It's simply 5 over 13, right? Because the square root of that is 5 over 13. Agree with me? All right, so we found ourselves theta, uh, sine of theta. So how much is that then? How much is that? That's 5 over 13, okay? So this is 5 over 13. I'm going to tell you to see below for the explanation, right? And by below, I mean the blue discussion. Now, 
we want to go to find cosine this angle and let's we call it I think orally lambda let's call this guy lambda cosine of lambda I need and sine of lambda right okay so let's call so let's call lambda so define oops, define lambda to be tangent inverse what do we have tangent inverse of 4 over 3 right I think we check again tangent inverse of 4 over 3 it's right there right what we want is cosine of lambda and sine of lambda to complete the to complete this uh, to find this expression okay all right we want we want to find sine of lambda and cosine of lambda that's what I want, correct? Okay. Very good. Um, so lambda is in the range of tangent inverse. Lambda is in the range of tangent inverse. Remember what the range of tangent inverse? The re remember what the range of tangent inverse? So as in, it was negative pi over 2 pi over 2, right? Tangent inverse uh, outputs things between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Do you agree with that? Okay. So certainly the cosine of lambda should be positive, no doubt, because in the second, or in the first or fourth quadrant, so lambda is somewhere, lambda is somewhere between these two, right? It's it's between minus pi over two, pi over two, minus pi over two, which is this angle, all the way to pi over two. So lambda lives somewhere here. So lambda is one of these angles, right? Maybe an angle like this. This would be lambda here, right? Okay. Maybe you cannot see it. Oh, let me dilate it a little more. How about this? So this is lambda here, right? All right. So uh, certainly cosine of such an angle it's an angle between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. Certainly cosine of such an angle is uh, is positive because the x-coordinate is positive. It's on the positive side of the x-axis, right? The first coordinate of this point, the terminal point, determined by lambda. Correct? All right, so this is positive. The sine of lambda may be negative, may be positive, depending where the where the lambda is. Okay? Let's find cosine first, and then we figure out what, what the sign is. Let's find cosine first. All right. Well, what do we have? We know that lambda is tangent inverse of 4 over 3, which means the tangent of lambda, right? It's a property for uh, inverse function. So tangent is going to take back lambda to 4 over 3. Correct? This is, this is an equivalence. Lambda is f inverse of x if and only if f of lambda is equal to x, right? All right. Okay, so we get this. And out of this, how can we get our hands on cosine? What's the relationship between cosine and tangent? Let's recall one of the Pythagorean identities that connects tangent and cosine. Remember this, tangent squared of an angle, let's take that angle lambda, plus 1 is equal to secant squared of lambda. Remember that? Tangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to 6 squared of theta. I'm going to take theta to be lambda. And what's 6 squared? What's sec of lambda? Isn't it 1 over cosine? So this is 1 over cosine squared then of lambda, right? So we have this we have this nice relationship between the two so we have that this is equal to that right so this connects me this connects me between uh, cosine this gives me a connection between cosine and tangent correct I'm gonna employ it I know I know tangent I know tangent of lambda I want to find cosine squared right I want to find cosine of lambda Okay, so uh, 
So 1 over cosine squared of lambda is equal to tangent squared of lambda plus 1. And what's tangent in my context? What's tangent of lambda? It's 4 over 3. So that's going to be the square of, sorry, this is going to be, this is equal to, this is going to be the square of, of 4 over 3 plus 1. Right? Agree? Okay. And what's 4 squared divided by 3 squared? It's 16 over 9 plus 1. Okay. If you do the same denominator here, 16 plus 9 over 9, 16 plus 9 is 25 over 9. Right? So 1 over this is equal to 25 over 9. The reciprocal of cosine squared is 25 over 9. So what can you say about cosine squared of lambda? One, one more time. The reciprocal of cosine squared of lambda is 25 over 9. So cosine squared is going to be 9 over 25, right? If the reciprocal of something is 25 over uh, 9, that, then that thing must be the reciprocal of that, which means 9 over 25, right? All right. And that's, that's going to give me that cosine of lambda is plus or minus square root of 9 over 25. Yes? Which sign is it? Plus or minus? We discussed cosine. Cosine is positive. Cosine is positive. So which one should I keep? I should keep the plus. Right? So that is to say, cosine of lambda is simply 3 over 5. It's simply 3 over 5. Make sense? All right, so that's cosine of lambda. I don't like this lambda. Let me just rewrite it again. So that's cosine of lambda. Okay. Um, this is one of the needed guys, right? So I know I know cosine of lambda now. I still have to find sine of lambda. I still have to find sine of lambda. Since tangent of lambda is equal to sine of lambda over cosine of lambda, we get that sine of lambda should be the product between tangent of lambda with cosine of lambda, right? Do you agree that if this holds, then this is going to hold? I mean, they are equivalent, uh, as long as cosine of lambda is not 0, which is not. Correct? So tangent of lambda is equal to sine lambda over cosine lambda. Then if you multiply both sides by cosine lambda, you get exactly this. Okay? All right. Do we have tangent of... Remember, we are after sine of lambda now. Do we have tangent of lambda? Yeah, it's right there. It's 4 over 3. And do we have cosine of lambda? Yes, it's 3 over 5. So we're going to be able to figure out what sine of lambda is. So sine of lambda is tangent of lambda, which is, we just said it, 4 over 3, times cosine of lambda, which is 3 over 5. Right? So that's, that's going to be then 4 over 5. We simplify, we simplify by 3, right? So, uh, so we get, we got sine of lambda, it's 4 over 5. So we got this part and this part, correct? So sine of lambda is 4 over 5 and 3, 3 over 5 is cosine of lambda. Let's, uh, let's replace it here. So how much is this guy? La remember tangent inverse of 4 over, over 3 that's the lambda that's the lambda so cosine of lambda how much did we find it below uh, how much did we find it again I forgot 3 over 5 right I think 3 over 5 so 3 over 5 and how much did we find for this guy this was 4 over 5 agree all right so now we have each individual one each individual one. Now we're going to put them together and find what the entire answer is. Okay. Uh, where should we complete this? How about, how about if I make room? How about if I make room? Let me just take all this discussion here a little down, a little down. And let me complete the discussion over, oops, sorry. 
one more time. Okay. Now let's go and complete this. This is equal to 5 over 13 times 3 over 5 plus 12 over 13 times 4 over 5 degree. Okay. And obviously we have the same denominator. So this is the same denominator is 13 times 5, right? And what's 13 times 5? 65. So we're going to have over 65. 5 times 3 is 15. Plus 12 times 4 is 48, right? So plus 48. Okay. And what's 48 plus 15? 63. So that thing at the end is 63 over 65. Make sense? So how much is this? Sine of the sun happens to be 63 over 65. But we have to do all the rest, right? And again, for the purpose of our class, you don't have to do this last, last thing. Once you find all the ingredients, so one more time, if you if you tell me what sign of this sum is, you set it up for me and you find each individual one form, each individual factor for me, right? Each entity, you find it for me like we did, 5, 13, 3 over 5, 12 over 13, 5 over 5. You don't have to, you don't have to do this last step. So what I'm saying is that part is not needed. You don't, you don't have, you don't have to do it for the purpose, purpose of our course. Okay, because it's just plugging in at this point. Okay. All right, let's do one more problem. So one more. Back to the book. All right, so here we're going to verify the identity, each and each identity. Let's choose one. Um, which one should I choose? Certainly, I'm going to choose an even one. And I'm going to choose one of the hardest ones. How about the last one? 62. How about 62? So we want to show in 62 that tangent of x plus y plus tangent of x minus y. We want to verify that this is the quotient made up of twice tangent of x secant squared of y divided by 1 minus tangent squared of x times tangent squared of y. Okay, so this is what I want to show. All right, let's start with from the left hand side as usual, because um, I have a lot of material here to, to deal with, and somehow write a sequence of equalities and get to that to that quotient at the end of the day. So left hand side is equal to tangent of x plus y. What's tangent of a sum? Uh, it's mentioned in this section at the beginning of the section. So tangent of a sum is the quotient, is the quotient between tan upstairs tangent of um, what is it? X plus tangent of y, right? Divided by one minus the product, tangent x tangent y. Agree with that? And what's the other one? What's tangent of the difference? It's very much the same, but here they're going to swap, right? The signs are going to swap. So we're going to get tangent of x minus tangent of y divided by 1 plus tangent of x tangent of y. Agree with that? Okay. Next. Look, the nature of the conclusion is one quotient. So they want to glue them together. They want to glue them together. And to glue them together, I would like to have the same denominator. I would like to have the same denominator. Correct? All right. So what would be that same denominator? Let me push this to the side. So that same denominator would be, how about the product of these denominators? This times that. So 1 minus tangent of x tangent of y 
times 1 plus tangent of x tangent of y. Correct? And uh, so we re we're going to rewrite this as something over 1 minus tangent x tangent y times 1 plus tangent x times y. So we have to multiply upstairs by 1 plus tangent x times tangent y as well. So we're going to have what existed, tangent x plus tangent of y. This is what existed already, right? This guy. This guy. Times what we multiplied downstairs to keep the value of the quotient. And what we multiplied downstairs is by this entity, right? 1 plus tangent x tangent y. Okay. Okay. Plus, plus, same thing. What existed, tangent x minus tangent y, times what we what did we multiply here to get to this product? We multiply by this guy downstairs. 1 minus tangent x times tangent y. So I'm going to cram here 1 minus tangent x tangent tangent y. How about make, making some room? How about making some room for the for that for that factor? Okay, let's push it a little more like this. Okay, so we're gonna have one minus ten x ten y, right? Something like that. Agree? Okay. All right. Downstairs. Downstairs. How does it look like? It looks like a minus b times a plus b right so downstairs it looks like a minus b times a plus b let me convince you again this can be thought of as a and this is b right so that's a the same a it's the same one and that's the same b correct so this is b so this is really of the form a minus b times a plus b. And what this formula tells us this is, if you unravel what this means, this is a squared minus b squared, the difference of two squares. We've seen it many times. Okay. So that's going to tell us how to handle downstairs. And as such, what do we do? a squared, what's a squared? a squared would be 1. 1 squared is 1, right? Minus b squared, the square of this b would be, this is a product between tangent x and tangent y. So it's the square of each individual one. So we get 10 squared time of x times 10 square of y downstairs, right? Okay, so I'm going to allow me to just erase this mess here. I just highlighted what I'm using. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get with this help, I'm going to get what? I'm going to get downstairs, as we just said, downstairs I'm going to have 1 minus tangent squared x times tangent squared y because of this formula that you see here okay all right now for upstairs for upstairs tangent x plus tangent y times 1 plus tangent x tangent y what do you think i'm gonna foil right i'm gonna foil all right let's foil while keeping some room here i don't want to have a mess so 10x is going to talk to 1. 10x times 1 is 10x. Correct? And 10x time, times 10x, 10y. So it's going to be 10 squared x, 10y. Agree with that? And 10y times 1 is 10y. And 10y times tangent x times tangent y is going to be tangent x tangent squared y. Right? All right. Plus, plus, okay, I realize it's not going to fit. How about now we make this guy a little here. Erase this piece and drag everybody the side okay probably now we have more room so okay so this was needed here oops what happened okay let's go back to purple this was needed over here 
All right, back to our calculations. So we finished the product of these factors. Now we're going to move on to the next. We're going to have tangent of we're going to have tangent of x times 1 and what's tangent of x times 1? It's tangent of x, right? And we're going to have tangent of x times negative tan x tan y. And what is that? Ne this is negative tan squared x tan y. Right? And negative tan y times 1 is negative tan y. All right, allow me to do it right here. Sorry about that. It is what it is. So negative tan of y. And then negative tan y times negative tan x tan y, this is going to be plus, for sure, plus tan y times tan x times tan y is tan x times tan squared y, right? So tan x tan squared y. Okay. All right. And then what? And then what? It looks like we're going to have some simplifications. Let's see. Tan squared x tan, tan y, I see a plus sign attached to it and a negative sign attached to it. So these are going to cancel. These are going to cancel. Okay. Also, tan y, let's choose a different color just to keep it the same. Tan y and negative tan y cancel. Okay. Anything else? Uh, the others are going to pile up, right? The others are going to fail off. So what do, what do we get? We get we get that quotient becomes 1 minus 10 squared x, x 10 squared y downstairs. Okay, here I have 10x plus 10x, the same 10x, so twice 10x, plus 10x 10 squared y plus itself. You see it? 10, 10x 10 squared y. So plus twice that thing. Correct? All right. Let's keep an eye what we want. What did we want? We wanted this guy. We wanted this guy. All right. So it looks like 210x should be kept. And it's somehow I'm going to get secant squared y. Well, how about we factor out the 210x? How about we factor out the 210x upstairs? So downstairs still the same. Still the same downstairs. How about we factor out 210x upstairs? And if you factor out 210x, that's going to become a 1. Factoring out means you divide each one by this factor, right? So that's going to be 1. Because if you, if you divide this guy by 210x, so dividing by itself, so you're left with 1, plus... You're going to divide this guy by 210x, so you're going to lose these guys. You're going to only get tan squared of, of 1. Agree? All right. And what's 1 plus tan squared of 1? Didn't we just recall this above I mean, a little while ago? 1 plus tan squared of y, it's one of the Pythagorean identities that's simply secant squared of the angle, right? And the angle is, is y in this context. This is y. 1 plus tangent square of y is secant square y, right? It's one of the Pythagorean identities. All right. And what, what do we get? Don't we get what we want? Don't we get 2 tan x times secant squared y divided by 1 minus tan squared x times tan squared y as desired, as we want it? Okay, let's check again. This is exactly what we want, right? It's right there. It's right there. Okay. All right, so uh, I'm going to end this section right here.